Uh, here we see the heart uh, external view again, same basic orientation. I'm now going to take off the uh, front piece here of this heart, hopefully. And uh, I'll show you this thing here in a second, but I'll put it aside for now. Uh, so here we see the inside of the heart. Again, anterior view, so we're looking at the front of the heart, and we're seeing the sort of the posterior surface in here. Uh, as I told you earlier, the blood comes back to the heart from the body through either the superior or inferior vena cava, which is, I'm not going to break out right now, but they, it returns to this chamber right here. So this is the upper chamber, so it is an atrium, and it is on the right side, so it is the right atrium. This blood is deoxygenated, and it's going to go through the following steps here. I'll kind of trace its path goes from the right atrium and at the same time blood's filling up the left atrium and they both they both discharge their contents into the ventricles at the same time but we'll do it one at a time here uh, right atrium it's the blood's going to pass through this little valve this little flap right here this v-shaped thing right here is uh, the right atrioventricular valve or a tricuspid valve so tricuspid means it's got three cusps or three flaps and the purpose of the valves isn't you know a lot of people think it's th that they that the purpose is to open up and let blood in well you don't need a, something there to let blood in you just would have to have nothing there right so when the blood goes from the right atrium to the right ventricle the right ventricle is going to contract but what you don't want is the blood to go back into the right atrium so from the right ventricle you're going to want it to leave out through this up here which if you remember is the uh, pulmonary artery so let's uh, track through that one more time. Right atrium, uh, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, pulmonary artery. On its way through the pulmonary artery, it's gonna go through the, uh, what's called the pulmonary semilunar valve. And I'll show you that on the front of the, oh, I might as well show you right now. Uh, mm, actually, yeah, there it is. So the pulmonary semilunar valve, if I put this guy on this way, and if I flip it around, you can see right up in there is that uh, is the the valve represented, and then there's that pulmonary artery. Now back to some of the structures that we have in this ventricle. You can see these cables right here. These cables are called chordae tendinae, or tendinous cords, and they attach uh, the valve to these big muscles right here called papillary muscles. So these big protruding bumps are called, this is a papillary muscle, another papillary muscle. And so they're kind of pulling down. It feels like they're pulling down on this, but they're not pulling to open. They're pulling so that when this chamber contracts, they resist the, uh, the, the tendency for that blood to go back up into this atrium. So they kind of like, as that valve slaps shut, like they're gonna connect and kind of like hold it so it, so it doesn't what they call prolapse. A prolapse valve would be one that flaps the wrong way. If you've got a valve problem, you're going to have some noises that they uh, that the heart will make called murmurs. So a murmur is just like leakage of blood back into the atrium, um, which is not something you want. So the blood has uh, just left the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery, pulmonary trunk, which branches into pulmonary arteries goes off to the lungs to get oxygenated. Then the blood comes back to the heart. And if you remember, it comes back to the heart through these little guys. You see these little black dots in here. Well, these little black dots are connected to these guys. And if you remember from the other video, this is these are pulmonary veins. So you've got the left side pulmonary veins and then the right side pulmonary veins over here. And the blood is oxygenated having just gotten back from from the lungs. So here we are in the left atrium. Uh, the left atrium is gonna, it has its own little oracle. You can see one kind of the remnants of one right there that's from the front piece. It's gonna, the blood's gonna go through this valve right here and this is the left atrioventricular valve or bicuspid valve. Uh, you might also see it called a mitral valve and I'll explain that here in a second but we have tricuspid and bicuspid. Now how do you remember which side's which? Well, the left side of the heart has a thicker wall, so the left side has a bigger job to do. It's gonna, it's gonna pump blood to your whole body. The right side only pumps blood out to your lungs and back. It's a shorter trip, lower blood pressure, not as strong. 
So left side is stronger. And if you, this is the way I remembered it. Uh, if you ever ask a little kid to show you their muscles, they always show you their biceps. So if you want to see if they want if you want to see how strong the kid is, they're going to show you the biceps. So bicuspid, strong side of the heart, which is the left side. Uh, mitral valve means uh, it, it's like a mitre, which is the the name that uh, they call the hat that bishops wear and cardinals. So the pope wears a mitre. So if you say, does the pope wear a funny hat? No, he wears a mitre. I guess it's funny. So now the blood here is in the left ventricle. We still see chordae tendineae and papillary muscles, which do the same job as they did in the right side. They prevent the blood from going back into the atrium, then they prevent valve uh, prolapse. So when these ventricles contract, the right ventricle pumped out to the pulmonary artery, the left ventricle pumps it right up here to the aortic semilunar valve. So there's a semilunar valve at the exit of both ventricles, this one being the aortic and the other one that I'd showed you being the uh, pulmonary semilunar valve. So here's this big aorta and aortic uh, arch. One thing you want to see right here, these little dots are the, uh, base, the base of the coronary arteries. So this would be the, the left coronary artery and this is the right coronary artery. A uh, couple of other things. This bit right here, this centerpiece, is called the interventricular septum. So it's interventricular between the ventricles, and a septum is just a, a barrier or wall between the ventricles. Some more sites of interest. In the wall of this uh, atrium, between the left, I'm sorry, right and left atria, is this little depression and it's a little disc shaped depression this is called the fossa ovalis it's an oval shaped depression fossa and it's the remnants of what when you were a fetus was a connection between the left the right and left sides of the heart this was called the foramen ovale uh, i don't think you guys have to deal with that till the end of this semester but that structure is the remnants of what used to be a hole between these two chambers and it is in the, in, the, in the newborn and in you, it's called the fossa ovalis. Uh, 